no matter what you do with the following information, the most important piece of advice is this, buy high quality marijuana seeds. It is worth the extra money to rest assured you are setting yourself up for a successful growing season. If you buy cheap, poor quality seeds instead, then you simply cannot achieve the same level of success, no matter how much effort and time you put into caring for your plants. Additionally, be sure to plant these high quality seeds in high quality soil. This will give your plants the perfect boost at the very beginning of their lives to build a foundation for healthy growth up through the flowering phase. If you don't have these two elements, your plant will never reach the monster size that greenhouse plants are well known for. The key is to think about each individual seed as an individual investment. Just a few seeds could actually feed your marijuana needs for an entire year if grown properly. When thinking about it like that, it provides the proper motivation to prioritize the needs and care of each seed as much as possible. One of the best things about really intricate greenhouse growing setups is the fact that it can be highly automated. In other words, it can be much easier for the grower because they don't need to do as much day-to-day -day care for their plants. One such automated system is a watering system that delivers water to the plants automatically, or with little effort on the grower's part. You may want to consider installing some automated systems of your own if you are the type of person who enjoys planning such things ahead of time, if you have a high enough budget for it. Once your plants have developed enough and are ready to begin the flowering process, change their light cycle to an even 12 hours of light and 12 hours of dark each day. This makes the plant believe the fall season has arrived, and will cause them to transition from the vegetative state to the final flowering process. During the 12 hours of light each day, the plants will need the strongest light possible to help produce energy for flowers. Either make sure your plant can be in direct sunlight for the 12 hours or move your plant into an enclosed location where you can hang a heating lamp overhead. If the lamp is high intensity, keep it about two feet away from the plants. Consider using a standard outlet timer and set it to a 12 hour cycle for the light cycle to be more precise. During the 12 hours of darkness each day, it's extremely important that no light enter the location of the plants. Any light that leaks into the plant space can disrupt the flowering of the cannabis and cause stress to or confuse the plant. Before the flowering process, you will have been supplying your cannabis plants with feeds that contain nitrogen nutrients. Stop with nitrogen once you move into the flowering process. At this point, the plants need more phosphorus and potassium for bud building. They also need magnesium and some sulfur. You may want to stop feeding your cannabis plants about two weeks before the flowering process finishes, in the late flowering stage, to allow watering to rinse minerals out of the plant. This, flushing, or, leaching, process forces the plant to use up stored food reserves so that they're not present in the plant when the cannabis is consumed. Ideally throughout the flowering process, temperature changes slightly between the light and dark cycles. During the 12-hour light cycle, when lights are on, try to keep the temperature in your growing area between 75 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. During the 12-hour dark cycle, when lights is removed, temperature should drop slightly to mimic night. Keep the humidity at a steady 70% to prevent pest issues and encourage better flower production. While you don't want fans to blow directly on the plants for extended periods. Keeping fresh air circulating by blowing it around the plants will help ensure proper ventilation. It takes months of hard work to prune and train plants before they are ready to be chopped and processed for flour or concentrates. Depending on the strain, it's time to harvest when the pistils have turned amber, and the trichomes are no longer translucent. Observe this color change with a microscope or hand lens. Timing is vital, but with knowledge of a strain's characteristics and ample practice, gauging the proper time to harvest will lower the chances of cannabinoid degradation. Processing for drying begins by removing the large fan leaves from the stem. Removing fan leaves can be completed manually with a gloved hand or scissors, and doing so will create better airflow around the flower. Leaving fan leaves attached can prevent buds from drying correctly, which is a recipe for mold. Ensure each plant has an identifier that states the strain name to prevent it from being grouped with the other strains in the room. Keep the dry room well ventilated with proper and gentle airflow. 
Achieve this with floor or wall mounted fans and by having adequate ventilation set up before harvest. The room will also need to be temperature and humidity controlled using humidifiers and dehumidifiers. Geography and outside climate will play a role in what equipment is required to manage humidity. Curing begins after the flowers are dry enough to be cut from the stem, also known as deboning. Then the flower should be placed into an airtight container, preferably glass. Ideally, a good cure will take two weeks to three weeks, but curing longer maximizes terpenoid profiles. The containers are burped several times a day by removing the lid to the container for a short period of time during the first week to release extra moisture that has escaped from the buds. Burping will only need to be performed a few times weekly once the flower has cured for 7 days to 10 days. After curing, the cannabis is ready for trimming and packaging. So much time is spent on training and flowering plants that the post-harvest drying and curing process is often overlooked. Slighting the curing process is a mistake, as drying and curing are arguably the most critical steps of the post-harvest process. With proper humidity, temperature and patience, high-quality cannabis is obtainable every crop rotation. Growing your own cannabis isn't particularly difficult, but it does require a little attention if you're looking to maximize flower production. And this can be achieved by using state-of-the-art humidifiers, lightings and air conditioning machines this will make your job easier, high-tech and at the same time it will increase crop yield.